Welcome. I'm Bert McCarty of Plus of Turfgrass Science at beautiful Clemson, South Carolina. And here we are today, which is March the 23rd, to talk about poa control. Uh, poa, of course, has become a major winter annual uh, grassy weed. Uh, it occurs on most continents in, in the world and has become resistant to many of our herbicides. So it's become much more of a challenge. Helping me today, the FEM Tech is Mr. T. Studemeyer, a master student of mine, and this study has been under the direction of, of Jacob Taylor, who is a PhD student of mine. So without further ado, again, we'll get started. All right, what we have here is a trial where we put out uh, plots back in the fall, again, to try to control mainly poana, but as you can tell in our untreated plot right here, we had lots of other trashy winter weeds, things like uh, white clover, uh, chickweed, dandelion, uh, blue eye, commonly blue eye grass, bluets, and some other weeds also in here, which is pretty common for most turf grass settings. Again, today is March 23rd, 2021. <coughs> this study was started last fall, so let's go through the treatments. Again, this is the untreated uh, the ply here, which is 101. Directly beside it are really two commonly used pretty much herbicides. Now these were applied back in mid-September of 2020. <coughs> and you can tell compared to the untreated, we are getting some weed control, but certainly not to the level that we had hoped for. This has really emphasized what many university personnel like myself have been preaching the last couple of years, where it's probably better not to put out your traditional pre emergent herbicides for, for poana and other winter broadleaf weeds, which would be September for this part of the world, but rather wait until November with a pre and post application. <coughs> Again, another common, commonly used pre emergent herbicide we pay out mid September. Again, compared to, to the untreated some weed control, but certainly not to the level that most commercial settings would like to see. Treatment four, now this application was put out in mid-November, and it's a combination of spectacle flow at six ounces, Celsius at four ounces, and then Princep or Simazine at 32 ounces. Again, compared to our previous treatments or to the untreated, excellent weed control. Uh, we have a little bit of escape of cub weed here, but by and large, uh, to the level that we had hoped for to achieve. Again. We waited until mid-November and put out that three-way tank mix to get both pre- and post merger weed control. <clears throat> Treatment five here is also spectacle at six ounces <coughs> and prints up at 32 ounces. But instead of Celsius, like in the previous uh, treatment, we inserted tribute total, and it's at one ounce per acre. Again, excellent weed control. This was uh, also put out in mid-November uh, no turf damage as far as greening up. So again, a very good treatment. Now here is kind of a Cadillac or one of the Cadillac programs uh, where we put out again, the spectacle tribute total in Princep in mid November, but we had a follow up in late December of just spectacle and Princep. Thinking that we might need uh, a second application to give a season long control, at least in this year, 2020 and 21, that probably was not necessary as we are getting excellent weed control with this uh, combination of products, as well as with this single applications, which we looked at previously. Number seven, also excellent weed control, also put out in mid-November, <clears throat> combination of barricade <coughs> at 32 ounces per acre. Monument at 0.53 ounces per acre, and then Prince Help again at 32 ounces per acre. Uh, again, excellent weed control, no turf damage, uh, just what the doctor ordered. Number eight, our last treatment here is actually a commercial product called Coastal Herbicide. Coastal from, is from Sipcan Agro a Corporation. It is a combination of prodiamine, uh, imazequin, and simazine. 
And so the prodiamine was put out 0.84 pounds active per acre. The imazoquin, 0.37 pounds active per acre. And then the simazine, 1.3 pounds active per acre. Again, just like the previous four or five plots. Excellent weed control. This, uh, again, was put out mid-November. And again, we're looking at this in late March of 2021. Again, just to wrap up from this study, uh, we saw much more efficient weed control if we waited to mid-November and put out a combination of pre- and post-herbicides. Uh, we think that this is a much more efficient use of dollars in terms of controlling poana as well as some other uh, broadleaf weeds. Uh, but again, you have to keep resistance in mind. So from these studies, uh, we're seeing good control if you wait that mid-November with the premature application of either uh, prodiamine or barricade or indazoflim or spectacle. This should be tank mixed with the general broadleaf herbicide. Uh, you need to rotate between something uh, like a mazoquin as in a coastal herbicide, the tribute total, or with the monument. <laughs> and then lastly, add in some simazine or princep. Uh, princep is a good broad general herbicide and controls not only poana but many of these broadleaf weeds uh, that you currently see. So again, uh, we could have substituted some other products such as Curb instead of the Monument or the Imazoquin. Uh, we just ran out of room in this particular study. So that would be another option. All right, now I should mention this trial, the Poana is resistant to glyphosate, so that's why we didn't have any glyphosate in this particular trial. Uh, if you don't have glyphosate resistant Poana, then obviously that would be another option. Also, as kind of a salvage treatment, for those in the in the transition zone like we're seated here uh, you could also go with the later season sometime in february application of a product containing glufosinate such as finale or cheetah pro uh, we've seen excellent results with the finale product uh, at a gallon per acre you put it out sometime in early to mid february with very little to to no damage to the bermuda grass as it's greening up so that would be another option. So keeping these things in mind is necessary as we run this herbicide resistant issue that I've been talking about. Thanks so much.